Okay, I'm going to back to reproduction. Surprise, surprise. Um, and we'll talk about reproductive problems in draft horses and more specifically the epitheliogenesis imperfecta, or the new name for it is called junctional epidermolysis bullosa. And it's pretty interesting. Okay, so advantages to start. Um, draft mares make excellent surrogate mother because they have high milk production. They rarely reject a foal. When I went to Ireland, this was on a sport horse farm. This is a Gypsy Vanner surrogate, and this little goober over here, he's actually a sport horse bull that she is surrogating. And she takes, she's like really attached to him, and it's really impressive because they, they are great mothers. And they're multiple ovulators, so they're excellent candidates for embryo transfer. It's like, so sometimes they'll like put two, three, even four on a and they'll just, they're great for transfer. Okay, before you go on, Usually horses don't like to carry more than one fetus. Mm -hmm. This is true, right? Yes. yes. Okay. And even like even for people who don't know that just even twinning is a dangerous problem in horses. More commonly in draft breeds and thoroughbreds. But like that first picture you said that was a shire with two healthy identical oh, yes. You can find them but it's not it's hard. Not and then to be viable, it's even rare. Some problems, uh, they have low fertility rates for both sexes. Um, they have twinning problems, retained placenta problems, uh, they're full of problems like dystocia, and they're the gene link birth defect that I'm going to talk about, as EI and then Jeb. This is basically the same thing as just Jeb is the new name for it. Um, so fertility issues and studs, um, they mature really slowly, and even at two years old, the semen quality is really poor. So they have to, and they have smaller testicle size relative to their body size compared to light breeds. So, and they have a high semen to low sperm concentration with high gel levels in the ejaculate. So you, the sample has to be centrifuged and then put in as a viable amount to in order to get a mare pregnant because they're so low. Um, mares, they also have fertility problems. 25% like of mares will w ovulate for twinning. And, um, but there is a risk of the second embryo being crushed. And, and usually it's 14 to 15 days, you'll sonogram a mare for detection to see if you want that second twin or not, and if it's gonna be crushed. Um, there have been known to be triple ovulate to conceive triplets. You know how rare that is even for twinning, so imagine triplets. Um, draft holes, they take longer to stand up and nurse, so people have to constantly monitor these horses, because if they struggle, they need help, you can't leave them. Um, and if dystocia is a problem, the foal's size is a problem. So and it makes rebreeding difficult and it increases chance of retained placenta just based on a foal's size. So bigger, if you want bigger horses, it, it makes it harder on the mare. So just something to think about. And this is what I'm going to talk about. Epitheliogenesis imperfecta is the old term, but junctional epidermolysis bullosa is the new term. Same thing, just two different names. It's an autosomal recessive hereditary junctional mechanobolus disease or defect. And as they have found the cause, it is a mutation in the gene that codes for the subunits, these three subunits in the laminin 5 protein, which acts like as, as a connective protein in the skin and the hoof wall. So, and it's found on uh, the chromosome 8 and 5 and these protein units respectively. Um, at least 34 cases uh, reported in saddlebreds and at least 28 in Belgians. Those are the only two breeds that get it for some reason. And then some cases go back as far as the 1930s in Europe. So, and horses can be a heterozygous carrier, but the recessive form is lethal. Um, unless it's manageable, but I'll go back to that in a minute. Um, like I said, it's found in saddlebreds and Belgian foals. Um, the foals are born with anywhere from small to large sections of skin just completely gone off the body. And they'll have, they'll lack like a missing oral mucosa, so they'll get like ulcers and lesions in their mouth. And the lack of a hoof wall attachment, they're just, it won't be there. So, and small areas may be treatable, like, I don't have, they're really small areas might be treatable with like a skin graft, but large areas are usually fatal because of infection and discomfort. They'll just put them down because it's not worth the hassle and they're just miserable. So, this is usually what it is. They're born with it, just, pieces of skin that are just wow. gone. See, like these small areas might be treatable with skin graft and maintenance and treatment, but <coughs> these large areas, they're just, because of infection, it's just no good. So, 
there is a, a way to test your horse. Um, you can have it testing a genetic lab. There's not like a specific test. You have to have it send your whole horse's DNA in to have it tested. Um, on, this is for Belgium. <coughs> I found it on the Belgian um, Association website. The only registered horses can be tested, and it is mandatory for new breeding stallions to be tested. It's not mandatory for mares, but I highly recommend you test your mares. So, and all you need is a stallion kit, which is $95, or a mare kit that's $75, and 50 strands of hair. Um, if the horse is less than a year old, take the hair from the tail. If it's older than a year, take it from the mane. I don't know why, so I can't tell you that. <laughs> you can breed a carrier, but make sure it's not paired with another carrier, or just don't breed the carrier at all, just in case you were to somehow breed it with a mixed breed and they somehow carry the carrier gene. So I just wouldn't recommend it. Um, your resources. And this question, I want to show you this horse first. This is a Belgian. Biggest Belgian that ever lived was Brooklyn Supreme. 19.2 um, hands, 6.4 feet. My dad's about 6'4", so way up here. That's shoulder. So point out, point out on the horse where they measure that too. They measure horses by hands, and it's usually measured right here at the withers. And so he's just over six feet tall. Mm -hmm. So let's so take this as maybe an average six foot gentleman. Yeah, he's yeah. and 3,200 3, pounds, which is a little over a ton. So <laughs> and measure 10 feet two inches around the girth, or oh, just goodness. around his belly right here. <laughs> Where it wore a 40 inch collar and required 30 inches of iron to make one shoe, and he lived in the 1930s. So just to put this into perspective, show and tell. This is about roughly a normal shoe, give or take half an inch of steel. I'll hold it for you. <laughs> now, that standard shoe on a standard light read. This is Bricky's shoe for one foot. So, I can easily wear it around my neck. That's one foot, bigger than my head. So I'm sure if he kicked you, it would knock your head clean off your shoulders. <laughs> so he was one of the biggest Belgians that I ever lived. Current living biggest Belgian is Big Jake. I highly like him. Look at him up, he's pretty cool. But um, I thought that would be really cool to show you guys. So, are there yeah, any questions? That's interesting. It's kind of like a little uh, trivia, which yeah. is neat. And so i got to remember it, 3,200 pounds, because you know I can use that in my physiological math questions. I could ask, how many gallons of blood does this horse have? How many quarts? How many pints? How many meals? <laughs> He's a big boy. <laughs> 3,200 pounds, that's, that's a lot. So, he could donate him. three, four gallons of blood oh, yeah. to another horse, and it wouldn't even bother him. Think of it that way. That's huge. No. Questions or comments, or other people have seen that? That's a new uh, thing for me for the horse, that skin, missing skin, that looked painful. And on this, oops, uh, website, where is it at? The Belgian Corpus okay. website right here, if you have people who have Belgians that breed and you want them tested, you go on this website and that's where you can get the kits to check for your breeding. So okay, now I know you did the hair, but does the kit also require blood or something? It didn't say, I just said hair because in the bulb of the hair is the whole DNA sequence. Okay, so so, so you pluck the hairs out then? Mm -hmm. Just pull them out. Rather yeah. than Antec them. does the test now. Yeah. The what's that? Antec does the test now. Yeah, I think okay. that's actually the lab that they sent. But you have to pull the hair out. Yeah, yeah. you can't, and you can't it. cut, you cut it. it. You pull it. You pull it and put it in an envelope.